Sit back and relax. That's right. You're listening to the Bob and Katie Show. Welcome, everybody, to the Bob and Katie Show. I'm Katie. And I'm Bob. Why are you laughing? Because my stomach, like, <laughs> I was waiting for you to talk, and my stomach was like, Rrr. I didn't know if you would really hear it. Okay, so we normally start off by talking about Facebook, you know, Twitter. Go like our Facebook page. Everything about going on. If it's okay with you, I want to start with something else. That's completely fine. I hate talking. I hate begging people, oh, please interact with our social media. I mean, I want them to, but I don't like asking, so. So even though I wanted to start with Sorry, something Sorry, proceed, else, look. We've already spent like a minute talking ahead, about go Facebook. Ahead, go ahead. Okay, you know that I don't cook too often. I'm super busy. You do most of the cooking. I, I used to do a lot of it when we first got together, but. Like when, hey, just because when we were dating that one time, you made me that fancy pasta with like this wine sauce. You're like, oh, I cook for you all the time. Yeah, but that pasta was so good. You still talk about it. That was eight years ago. That was more than eight years ago. That was when we were dating. We've been married for eight years. Well, I heard somebody talking about something, and I wasn't sure if it was true. Oh, God. And I wanted, I, I really. <laughs> I have no idea what you're about to ask me now. I really, I'm, I'm kind of scared. And this is going to make me feel like, or, or not feel, but this is going to make me look an idiot, but it is what it is. I wanted to Google it and look it up so bad, but I, I just held off. And I've been oh, my God. What is it? For two weeks. Do you cook things? Inside of a turkey. Is that, like, a, is that a thing? Does that happen like during Thanksgiving? Yeah. You cook things to eat. Like the stuffing? Stuffing. I mean, you stuff it inside the turkey. In the turkey's butt. And then you feed it to people. Yeah. And everybody knows about this? <laughs> I mean, I, I know about it. I can't speak for everyone in the world, but, uh, does does your mama get her stuffing out of the turkey's butt? Yeah, my mom, she usually makes, um, she does both. Like, she'll make a pan of stuffing just in the pan, and then she'll make some more inside the turkey. How do I know which stuffing comes out of the turkey's butt? Um, I, you, I don't know. Usually she says this one came from inside the turkey, this one did. How long have we been married? Um, <laughs> eight years. So we've been married for eight years, and you've been feeding me butt stuffing at least once a year for eight years. Look, you know, it's not my fault that you'll be paying attention at family gatherings. You're sitting over in the corner reading your comic books or something. Maybe if you had paid attention, you wouldn't get butt stuffing. <laughs> so that... So oh. you, you just learned this, and it just, like, blew your mind. <laughs> well, I heard... Okay, the guy that was talking about it, it was another podcast, and... He, they were talking about Thanksgiving, and he says he likes to eat the apple out of the turkey. And everybody at the table was confused, like, "Well, do you put the apple in the turkey's mouth? Do you cook turkeys with the heads on it, like, like Chinese oh, ducks?" And he was like, "No, no, no, you put it inside, like the stuff." Like a whole apple? I've I've never heard of that. That's something new. Well, then somebody to I mean, new to me. Yeah, somebody at the table said, "Well, we eat the stuffing out of the turkey," and that led me to believe that people know that. Other people cook things inside of turkey butts and then feed it to people. Yeah. I don't know that I'm okay with that. Why? The turkey, like, it's it's empty on the inside. I mean, <laughs> that sounds so sad. Those poor little turkeys. Those little turkey. He's so, he's so empty on the inside. No, but literally, like, all his organs and stuff are taken out. Do you take them out? No, you buy them like that. I mean, like, you get, like, the little package that's stuffed inside the turkey whenever you first buy the turkey that has, like, the giblets and stuff in them. Like but a... You, but you gotta take that out. Wait, 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 wait. Like a package package? Like it's like wrapped it, in plastic? Yeah, like it's a, like a bag of... Of the innards. turkey insides. Yeah. So the company... And, like, the neck is usually in there, too. All right. The neck... Yeah, some people some people use that stuff to make gravy, or my mom sometimes. Oh my god, has your mom been feeding me neck gravy? She'll, she'll chop up the um the stuff and put it in the stuffing, or I mean, people use it in different ways, or not. At, I, I whenever I've cooked turkey, I just throw that stuff away. I don't use it. So the company takes the turkeys, takes off their necks, 
takes out their innards, puts them in a bag, and stuffs them back inside the turkey's butt and sells it to you. And then you take, much, yeah. you take the bag out. And what do you do with the bag? I mean, you you have to take it out to, to cook the turkey. You don't cook the turkey with the bag inside of it. Okay. But you can use it for different purposes. Or not use it. Or not use it, yeah. You should not use it. I've, I've never personally used it, but. Oh, thank God. <laughs> well, I, uh, I had the suspicion that. This was true because a couple of people at that table were not super surprised. So we're going to have a guest on the show tonight. Oh, we are. Because aside from you, there's only one other person I can think of that's fed me turkey my whole life. Your mom? Yeah, and I'm going to ask her about it. I, I let her know that I was going to call her, but I didn't tell her why. So well, <clears throat> I feel sure that your mom knows about this. Your mom has cooked many turkeys. Well, I told... I, all right, I said... Why don't your dad cooks turkey? Is your... My know, dad cooks the turkeys. I know your dad always yeah, cooks the turkey them. for... Um, Hopefully he pulls that bag out no, for No, your dad has that roaster thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm sure people want to hear... Oh, well, I let my mom know that I was going to call her. roaster pan. I, le- I let her know I was going to call her during the show, and she wanted to know why. And I was like, I'm not going to tell you. Because I, I do the same thing to you. Like, he didn't know what yep. we were going to talk about. And I, I'm, you know my mom. She worries. So oh, she, you have her freaking oh, out. Oh, yeah. She probably thinks we're going to talk about all the Your Confederate flags. Your mom has probably flags. smoked 18 cigarettes waiting for this <laughs> phone call. You got her so freaked out and worried. I'm, I'm pretty sure Poor she... Poor thing, she's probably sitting on the back porch smoking a cigarette right now. Is your job tonight to just keep interrupting me every time I talk? I... Are you excited? Look. We haven't recorded in a while. You're just excited, we right? We have been married for eight years, and I've been interrupting you for a long time, so you might as well be used to it by now. You interrupt me, too. This is what we do. I think more. We than, have short attention spans. You keep doing it. <laughs> I think I don't listen to you more than I interrupt you. Hmm. Probably. So my mom probably thinks because the hot news right now is the the Supreme Court. Um, what is it called? Verifying? No, not verifying. They're allowing uh, gay marriage and then the Confederate flag stuff. Which we're not talking about any of that because I'm sick of it. I'm sick of hearing all of it. But I'm pretty sure. She's sitting out back. For anybody who wishes to discuss any of these topics, just log on to your Facebook page, page and I'm sure everyone on there can help you're, you out. Yeah, your your Facebook page right now, I guarantee it, is filled with <laughs> Confederate flags and rainbows. And if it's not, then you must live <laughs> under a rock. But yeah, I guarantee she's sitting out back right now smoking cigarettes, thinking that we're fixing to call her out on you, this stuff. You probably have her freaked out. All okay. right, so let's give her a call. Is she not going to answer? I freaked her out. She's not answering. She's not going to answer the phone. Hi. Hey, what's going on? Not much. You're sort of live on the Bob and Katie show. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, what, do you, what did you think I was going to talk to you about? I have no idea. Are you scared? Yes. How many, how many, <laughs> how many cigarettes have you smoked in the last 10 minutes? <laughs> Uh, none. None? Well, you're not that scared then. You're all right. Okay, so I'm going to give you, you know, I'm just going to ask you a question. Uh, since, you know, I was a baby and started eating Thanksgiving, how many times have you let me eat something out of the turkey's butt? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what kind of question is that? I think it's a, a very legitimate and noteworthy question. I want to know, in, in my life, you, as my mother, how many times have you let me eat something out of a turkey's butt? And nine. See? None that I know of. Well, you think I'm sneaking around eating things out of turkey's butts? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. no. Um, I'm not going to dive into it because we talked about it for the first like five minutes, but I found out recently that people cook things inside of turkeys. Yeah, they do. They cook dressing. Do you cook dressing they inside cook of No, I don't. Okay, do you... There's apparently a bag of turkey innards that comes in the turkey. Do you pull that out? Oh, I got a story on that. No, no, no. You Before you tell me the story, do you pull that bag out? Yes. Okay, what's your story? I think it was our first Thanksgiving. Was I was I there for this? No. Okay. And um, 
I checked. I, I didn't see nothing. You checked so I, inside the turkey's butt? Huh? You checked in the turkey's butt? Yes. How do you, how does that process go? What do you do? Do you spread it apart? Look inside? Do you, no, you just reach up in there. You, it's you, like, not like a, it's not like a sphincter. It's an open body cavity. You're really not making this any better. Like inside of his chest. You can go in through the chest? Thank no, you, Katie. Through the bottom. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you checked and you didn't see the bag. No, so I put it in the oven and I had it cooking. And at some point. Why are point, you making that face? I knew it was coming. At some point I called Mama. And I was talking to mom, and she asked me about it. And I said, no, I didn't have one. And she started laughing. She said, oh, yeah, it's got one. You need to pull it out and check again. And I pulled it out, and lo and behold, there it was. (laughs) Okay, so what happens when you cook a turkey with plastic bag innards? You fed that turkey to my dad, didn't you? (laughs) Just answer yes, the questions. We did. This is like. Yeah, but it wasn't a plastic bag. It was paper. This is like sixty minutes. I'm asking the hard stuff right now. Yeah. No, I just took it out. So I was also informed that inside the innards they have, uh, they put the necks in that you can make neck gravy out of. Did you ever do that? Giblet gravy. I'm sorry. Come again. The giblets. It's called giblet gravy. What's a giblet? The Turkey. It's all the stuff that's in that bag. I ain't yeah. got no giblets. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the turkey's got I something called them. giblets on the inside? Or is that baby turkeys? No, it's not baby turkeys. Oh, God. They're not I don't mammals. Know where it comes from. That's just what they call it. That's what they call what? Go, hey, pull, get your Google giblets and it's tell like, me what a I giblet is. I think it's like the liver and, you know, like chicken livers and... People eat the and chicken. And heart and neck and all that stuff. Oh, so you're saying they mix it all together and they just, yeah. they call it, so it's a turkey mixture of innards and they call it giblets. Yeah. Yeah. So it ain't like, it's not a turkey full with, filled with little baby turkeys. No. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. That's, that's horrible. <laughs> so, did you make giblet gravy? No. All right. Well, I feel better about my childhood. I was really nervous right. for a little while. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure Katie's been feeding me giblet stuff for eight years. It, it stops now. <laughs> I'm not I'm not eating any more things out of any more turkey butts. It's not happening. You, you got anything you want to say to anybody on the air? So where did this thought come from? Uh, you got to go back and listen to the show. I'm not going to go through it again. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, I gotta go, but call me maybe. Do what? What? She she has some, you what? She she's got some years on her. She didn't she didn't get that reference. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> There's a little Canadian girl that says that in the song, and it got real popular. I apologize. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna let you go so we can move on with our stuff. Thanks for taking our call tonight. All righty, buddy. All right, bye. Bye bye. You didn't tell your mother you loved her before you hung up the phone. I'll say it right now for everybody. I love my mother. I love you too. She spent her whole my whole life not giving me giblet gravy, so <laughs> I'm definitely I'm definitely a fan of my mother right now. Oh my goodness. Um okay, so make sure you check us out on Facebook. The Bob and Katie Show. You can check us out on Twitter. Uh the and at symbol at Bob and at Katie Show. Bob and Katie Show. Uh we we really I, I've been trying to post a lot more on there lately. So hopefully we'll pick up some followers. Uh, what are we going to do? What do you want to talk about now? I'd like to take... <laughs> I could... Oh my gosh. You'd like to what? <laughs> that came out so country. I was like, I'd like to... <laughs> I'd like to take a minute and talk about something. Where you... <clears throat> okay. Excuse me while I regain my composure and uh, try to tamp down the countryness. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to take a moment and talk about sharks. Oh, sharks. Okay, let's talk about sharks. Wait. Because there, oh, because everybody's getting eaten. There's been today was the sixth. Sorry, my stomach just made another noise. Um, 
the sixth shark attack within like the last couple of weeks. Somebody got bitten today. Today, yeah. Somebody yesterday and today, both. Um, I think it was up near the Outer Banks, somewhere around there. Um, all the all the rest of them happened right here around our backyard, pretty much. But um, <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure mostly everyone has heard about these shark attacks, unless you. Are not local. I'm tired of hearing about the shark attacks. Don't get me wrong. I feel bad for there was a lot of children well, involved. Look, I wanted to talk about shark attacks. Okay, how you can be interrupting me talking just, about how you don't want to talk about sharks? You sit right there. And let me talk about these sharks. Fine, talking about the sharks. You, I, you, you messed me up. I don't even. You were talking about sharks. But I mean, <clears> like, <throat> come on. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I have a great love and respect for sharks, and you probably even say I'm mildly obsessed. With sharks, I love Shark Week. It's like the best week of the year. When is that happening again? Um, this year it starts July fifth. Oh. Well, I love Shark Week. I I, I know, look but that forward means forward to it. I'm gonna spend all day at work, and then I'm gonna come home, and there's gonna be nothing but sharks on TV. Yeah, pretty much, just for one week. Like it was somewhat interesting the first time you made me watch it nine years ago, but it's just I don't know. I'm not into it. Who can get tired of sharks? They are magnificent creatures. And I'm like, I'm so obsessed. You know what? You know what? You know what does interest me? The fact that everybody is freaking out about well, the mean, shark it's, attacks. It's really, um, it's, I mean, it's really kind of uncommon for this many to happen in like such a close area. Like there were the two that happened, um, both at the same beach, very, very close to us. Um, within like an hour or so, and both of the children bit and lost limbs. And so, I mean, it's just, it's really, it's kind of uncommon for there to be this many around this area and like in such shallow waters and stuff. It's really, it's, it's kind of crazy. So yeah, people are freaking out. I, I mean, you know me, we've married a long time and, uh, I do not like to swim in the ocean because of that very reason. Everybody has picked on me for years like, I'll go into the water with you, and I'm freaking, like, I mean, to the point of panicking. Because I go deep. I like to go And, like, I'm, like, clinging to you because I don't want to get eaten by a shark. And you're always talking about how crazy I am. And I'm like, I feel justified right now. <laughs> this is why I freak out. Because that's where they live. And they, yeah. they'll. I they'll know, and you. everybody's so surprised. Oh, my God, the sharks are getting us. That's what I'm saying. I'm not surprised. I've been saying this for years. They live. That's where they live. Now, if I like, if I, if I get attacked by a shark in the front yard, I'm going to be surprised. But if I go out into the ocean, sorry, that's where they live. It like, it burns me up how people are like, let's, let's go shark hunting and kill all the sharks. Um, no, that's where they live. You go in their home and they're animals, they're creatures. They bite. Don't go kill them all and throw them off the ecosystem because you want to go swimming in their front yard. It makes me very angry. Oh, but anyway. My phone went off. I apologize. I, ha- I have another <laughs> interesting shark story to okay. share with you. because I'm, I'm down. I, as far as I know, you haven't heard about this, and it has nothing to do with a shark attack. I probably haven't um, because whenever I hear shark stories, I kind of veer off. Because you know I'm going to tell you about it later. Yeah. Matter of fact, when you start telling me right now, I'm probably just going to like doze This one doesn't. It's, it has nothing to do with a shark attack, though. Okay. Um. The shark attack is the most interesting thing. So you're going to tell me a shark story about it. I don't know. This is pretty this interesting. This shark went swimming in the ocean. No. Um, a shark. I'll read you the title of the, the news article. Shark ejected, killed after semi-truck blows tire on I-95, troopers say. What? Yeah. <laughs> See, I told you. I told you it would be interesting. A shark ejected so, out of what? A semi, a truck. Basically, there was a semi transporting four sharks from Florida oh, to, to like SeaWorld to, or something? No, to New York. They were going to Coney Island in New York. And the semi- I'm sorry. Somebody was taking sharks to Coney Island? Yes. Like on vacation? No, they were going to, I guess, an aquarium there or something. Okay. Um. Anyway, and the semi blew a tire and one of the sharks got ejected from the truck, just like somebody not wearing their seatbelt. And he died. The shark died. Oh. And I like I got really sad. Like I teared up a little bit you know, over this, this is poor a comedy sh- podcast, right? This a shark died in a car accident. Okay, okay, I got you. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. You know what? You you are a comedic genius. You of genius, all people, and I didn't pick up on that. 
Wow. You just schooled me. <laughs> like, that was that was great. You did a wonderful job. But speaking of SeaWorld, SeaWorld came out and got the other three sharks and took them to SeaWorld to, uh, <laughs> to recuperate <laughs> from their car accident. We need to, uh, I think we should name this episode Sharks Can't Drive. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, 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 what do you think? That's officially the name, right? Episode so. 15, Sharks Can't Drive. Okay. It's sad though. Like it made me really sad. Like the poor shark. I'm not like, sad. I, I think it's sharks. funny. I, it's that's good. I like. I love sharks so much. But yeah, I'm like, well, that's definitely not something you hear about every day. I have some shark statistics. Oh, do you know? Yes, I do. Well, sort of. I have other animal statistics that venture into the shark world. Sort of. That is. You know what? I'm just going to get into it. Did you know that deer kill 130 people annually worldwide? I could believe that. Cows kill 22 people. Really? Worldwide. Like, okay, wait, how? How are cows killing people? I don't know. It's probably the ones from the TV show. What? Well, I have no that idea. That to eat more chicken? Them cows is shifty. Like, I don't, are they like, are they like, is it like cow tipping gone wrong? Or how are 22 people annually? Like, how have I never heard of, like, these deaths by Well, I mean, it's, it's 22 people worldwide. That's nothing. Since we started this podcast, 22 people have died. The like, 22 people is not Well, that's a lot. really morbid, and I don't want to talk about that. Okay. Oh, how about this one? Okay. Ants kill 30 people. I thought, really? Worldwide, Jeez. annually. Ants are vicious, though. <laughs> Horses kill 20 people. I, I could see that. Worldwide. I'm so curious about the cows, though. Je- jellyfish kill 40 oh, people 40, 40? Wow. worldwide hippopotamuses mm, those things are mean you know i can't i can't say hippopotamus without thinking about that movie with adam sandler um big daddy and he's trying to teach the uh the guy how to read and he's trying to read hippopotamus and he goes <laughs> hip 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 hop hip hop anonymous <laughs> I, I love that part okay so uh Hippos. How many do you think they kill? How many people do you think they kill annually? Oh, I have no idea. Just I mean, obviously not like here in North Carolina, I don't think. So yeah, there's, parts- there's hippopotamuses <laughs> running rampant in North Carolina. <laughs> but you know, the other parts of the world that they uh, they they gather in a circle, <laughs> and then they have little round people that run around and just come out. And <laughs> so, all right, how many people annually worldwide? Take a guess. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. How about twenty nine hundred people? What? Yeah, hippos are murderers. Oh my god. Hippos going around like gangster that's style, like, how taking many people is out. That per day, like that's like a lot. It, it puts a whole new outlook on that that hunger like, hippo game, right? Why? And we let children play that game. Jeez. Mm-hmm. It's it, like it's accurate. I remember playing that game with my cousins. It's a lot more scary now when you and think like, about it, right? Back on it those, now, those I'm like, hippopotamus oh. are like, <laughs> that's how the hippos. Thug life, hip hops, hip hop wow. anonymouses. They're crazy. That's so many. Okay, last statistic: sharks. Sharks. How many people annually? Do they kill? Do they kill? Oh, uh, I don't think it's a lot. Not that they kill, because I mean, look how many we've had six people bitten off of our coast in like the last couple of weeks, and none mm-hmm. of them have died. Thank goodness. Um, so I don't know, not very many. Like, and this is worldwide. Worldwide. A hundred. One hundred. You're pretty close. It's five. Wow. <laughs> less. Sharks kill less than ants. Less than cows. Sharks kill less people than the cow. All right. Wow. The big animal that sits in a field and eats grass kills more That's, people. Like, I still don't understand how cows kill. Than the kill. shark. Okay, so this is your job. Over the next week, I need you to Google cow killings. You probably, you probably don't need to Google cow killings. You're going to get something gross. Google. Oh. <laughs> Google. Uh, I've watched those documentaries. Cow, cow kills human, and figure it out for us, and bring it back to the next episode. Oh. So sharks kill less than cows, kill less than ants, kill less than horses, definitely kill less than hip hop anonymouses, kill less than jellyfish, and kill less than deer. See, they're not such bad guys. Surprise! We live in the ocean. You got any more awesome shark stories? Um, unfortunately, no. That's it. Would you ever go swimming with sharks? Me. No. No. I mean, other than like going to, uh, going Go to, the, to the beach, beach. <laughs> yeah, so hanging out where they live. Uh, we have a question from Facebook. Is it about sharks? It's not about sharks. Oh, dang. Tim wants to know 
<laughs> I don't know. There's some little kid next door <laughs> screaming. That's not our kid. Probably because our neighbors have their kids out at like 12 o'clock at night. Yeah. Like, like that's like a goat. That small child needs to be in the bed. Well, they're raising goats. Okay, so Tim asks, what's your thoughts on the Wilmington music scene, past and present? Well, presently, from everything I can see, there's not really a music scene. There's like that one place, Ziggy's or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's not like it used to be. Yeah, we're old people. We don't ever go out to shows anymore. Yeah. It's definitely not like For it anybody used to be. not local, we're talking about Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, yeah, Wilmington, North Carolina. Sorry yeah. about that. Everybody's not local. Um, yeah, Wilmington, North Carolina is what we're talking about. There's somebody over there in Europe right now going, What are they talking what about? What the heck? Um, that was a horrible British accent. I, I wish Rusty was here. I, uh, I think it'd be hard for us to really judge because, like I said, we. I think it, it's been like, what? Like, well, I mean. Years? I don't think it's hard for me to judge because we don't I, partake in the music scene I'm, anymore. Yeah, but really. I'm friends with a lot of people that do, so I hear about what's going on, and it doesn't sound anything exciting. Like the only exciting stuff that I've seen is like the Made Up Romance got back together and played some shows. I didn't go, but I was like, man, I'd like to see that. Yeah. But it's a band from way back when, you know. And uh, uh, Skyler's group, oh my gosh, he is legend. They're playing together again, but I mean, like other than that. I haven't really heard anything, like, worth going out to, you know? Well, even if we did, we yeah. probably wouldn't be able to go. <laughs> what do you mean? We have nine-month-old twins. Oh, yeah, yeah, I gotcha. I it's gotcha. hard to go to the grocery store. Now, um, back in the day, it was amazing. Oh, yeah. But I think that was mainly because I was in it. Well, I think that <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard for us to be... Um, uh, unbiased about the past music scene in Wilmington because it's like, yeah, you know, you were playing music and just about everybody we knew well, was playing music and we were out every weekend going to shows, but we were young and that's what we did and that's what our friends did. So we're like, yeah, this is awesome. But like, even if you and everybody we knew still played music every weekend and we went out, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't think it was awesome, but I'm I'm older now, you know, like old lady. Yeah, I, I'm not an old lady. I'm just saying I might not <laughs> enjoy it the same way as I did half my lifetime ago when I was like, yeah, this is awesome. This is the best thing ever. This is like the most important thing in life right now. It definitely, it definitely was really fun. Um, oh yeah, I had a blast. There the was guy, lots the guy of that, many good years. The guy that asked the question, Tim, was actually the lead guitar player for a band called the Combat Junkies, and they were incredible. You know, that's who we... I was a fan. Kevin yeah. punched me in the forehead once by accident. My band strived to play shows with them. You know, and we and we got... The, they let us open for them all the time. And I'm not going to say we didn't deserve it, but we definitely weren't on the same level they were, you know? That's why you opened. That's why, yeah, that's why we <laughs> opened. But uh, it was a blast every time, you know? And they gave us a lot of inspiration. They reached the point where they started... Uh, they were a punk band, and we... You know, we wanted to be like them, which is weird because that's really not what being a punk was about. You know, you're not supposed to conform. But, uh, no, it was a good time. But from everything I'm seeing now, not too much going on. Some There's a lot of dueling piano stuff going on. I see that all the time. So I have, uh, I have a couple news stories. Thanks, Tim, for the question. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Uh, that's our opinion about that. We live in our glory days. There is a better than not chance... There's a pretty pretty dang good chance uh, Tim's going to be on the show one day. Um, he's a he's an avid listener, and he's moved real close to us, and he really wants to be on the show. And I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, fine. the only problem we have is having two babies and trying to figure out when to do it. And we record at twelve o'clock at night, and it's just craziness. When Tim has a baby too, they they do. They have a baby. We have to set up some play dates. So uh, some news. You ready for some news? I'm ready. All right. This is entitled. Bacon eating, lingerie wearing, one hundred and fifteen year old is the world's newest, what? oldest person. So uh, Susanna Jones turned one hundred and fifteen a couple weeks ago, and she became the oldest living person. And we've had three oldest living people this year so far. Don't ask me why I'm following it, but it's it's fun for me. There's been three of them, which is sad. Because they're so that been means just I guess the first two are no of, longer. Yeah, they're no the, longer the oldest people. But uh, you know, they do an interview every time you have the world's newest oldest person. And this lady eats bacon all the time. She wears sexy lingerie to make herself feel young. And I read her story, and you know what she contributes her old age to? 
What? She never Thank had you. the opportunity to have kids. So she helps her family raise their kids. She had a marriage for a very, very short time. But she was like, yeah, I don't have the stressful marriage. I don't have the kids. And now she's 115 years old. I, I could... And I, I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way because I love my children more than life itself. And, and, and we have a great marriage. But I know for me, because I did have children a little later in life than some people. Um, you know, I was 31 when our children were born. Um, I feel like it's definitely aged well, me having kids. Like, I feel much older. They're nine <laughs> months old. And I feel like they've already shaved nine years off of my life. <laughs> like, I Like, I just recently had a birthday a couple weeks ago. And... I woke up the next morning and I was like, I feel way older than what I should right now. Like, I definitely, it's definitely aged me having children. And yeah, the stress, like, there's no other stress like it when you have kids. Just knowing that you have other lives that are completely dependent on you. There's no other stress like it. So, I, um, I mean, I understand her logic there and it makes sense to me. So, the moral of the story is, uh, if you're married, get divorced. <laughs> don't have any kids and you'll live to the ripe old age of 115 and wear all the sexy lingerie you want i'm <laughs> good for her yeah. good for her i mean not, i don't want to see it but good the for lingerie her. or her or, or 115 years what is it you're not wanting to see her, i don't want to be 115 years old her being in the lingerie. <laughs> so i got i got one more piece of a uh, story that i saw that i thought was interesting a family bought a house for 1.3 million dollars all right. So a lot of money. And they found out this house has a stalker, not the family, but the house. Um, that doesn't even make sense to me. I don't. They started getting letters. <laughs> what? They started getting letters. It's like one of those people that's in love with like inanimate objects. No, but that would be fun. Like if you just woke up in the middle of the night and there was somebody licking the side of your house. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't remember the word for it, but you know, it's like you have people and they can like fall in love with an inanimate object and like <sighs> love them like a, like they would a person like Katie, Katie, you got to get up. That guy's outside. He's rubbing on the house again. So that's so, not, no, that's doing, not what's okay. going on. So they're getting letters from someone that calls themselves the watcher. Holy crap. That would freak, <laughs> that would freak me out. And I, I guess he talks about things that they do and he sends them letters. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. I'm but he's not talking you. them. No. And this is why that, I say that. Okay. Because it turns out the people that sold them the house knew about it. And they didn't disclose that information. So what? now the new family's suing them because they want out. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely something they should have disclosed. They want no more to do with this house. I wouldn't either. And you know what? I wonder if... Uh, so what do you think... This, like, why do you think this guy is stalking this house? Like, do you think it used to be his house at one point? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, maybe it got foreclosed on and it was his house. And so now he just watches it. And every family that moves in there, he's, like, terrorizing them. I'm curious to know what race these people are. Why? Because, like, when you watch scary movies, like, uh, you know, white people, they'll always go... And, like, get this house, a new house. Like the Amityville Horror. Right, yeah, and the house is haunted. And the guy's like, it's fine, it's going to be fine, it's okay. We're all right, we're going to be all right, we're going to do fine, we're going to live here, we're going to pay the money. And, you know, I hear, you know, like, I, I listen to a lot of stand-up, and I hear black comedians talking, and, they, and, they, and they're basically like, no. Nah. If you walk into the house, and it's haunted, you leave the house. That you don't want nothing to do with the house. And it sounds like what these people are doing, they're out. They want their money back, they're gone. So, pretty smart people. But could you imagine that? Like, what if we checked our mail tomorrow and there was a letter in there and somebody was telling us about, the, like, hey, we saw you recording the podcast last night. Well, we would have to move. Yeah. Gone. Out. I'm out. Well, that's all the news stories I have. What do you got? It's your turn. Um, Pull something out of your bag of tricks. I can talk about breastfeeding. <laughs> Reagan started doing this new thing lately. <laughs> Do you want me to tell you the story, or should I just stop? No, you t tell me the story. I, if, if it's if it's if it's too bad, I'll. I'm sorry. It like this is like um, you know my interesting story. Okay. Of late, I, I'm sorry. I don't hardly ever leave the house. Um. Anyway, I um. Uh, if this is if if there's anybody listening, this is not. It's, just tell the story. I don't. I don't want to offend anyone. But uh, anyway. Oh, good lord! Because everybody's offending everybody uh, <laughs> nowadays. Well, some people might be really weirded out about hearing me talk about breastfeeding. But uh, anyway, Reagan, I started this new thing lately, like this past week. Whenever I'm breastfeeding her, she she wants to like pinch me. 
On my boob. Like Your she, nipples? No, I mean, because the nipple's in her mouth. She's eating. Oh, okay, okay. But, like, she, what started, like, a few weeks ago, she would be You're going to show the audience with uh, your sorry, hands? I, You're doing I, the hand I, motions again. I, I can't help it. I can't help it. <laughs> It All started right. a few weeks ago, like, she would be breastfeeding, and she would, like, grab my boob, like, she was eating a sandwich, or a burger, or something, and, like, she would, like, squish it. <laughs> so, she's, uh, caressing? No, like, she started grabbing, like, she would grab my boob and kind of squish it and hold it like it was a sandwich, and, like, you know, it's in her mouth. <laughs> I'm taking selfies. Keep talking. <laughs> So anyway, it, that's how it got started. And then from there, she started pinching me. Like, she would grab my, my boob skin, and, and she would, like... She One was, of them bit you the other night, and you bled. That was Reagan. Yeah. Th- that was Reagan. So she's pinching you, she's no, biting she, you, and you continue okay, me, to do this? Let me finish my story. Let me finish I my story. I will buy you formula. She, like, she'll grab my, my boob skin, like, right at the surface, and, like, she, like... She rolls it in her fingers and she like pinches it really hard. Like pizza dough. So she's what? like like rolling it like. No, like she'll pinch it between her fingers and like roll her fingers back and forth. Like Show it to me. Show them. Show the audience. That oh, hurt. Sorry. Um. Anyway. That's what she's doing to you? Yeah, like she's pinching me really hard. Okay. And so. then she like, she, she has a very, very, very strong suction. Like her suction is way stronger than Riley's. She's always been a really good breastfeeder. But, uh, and so she's just started lately. She'll pinch me. And then like, she's, you know, she's sucking, she's latched on and she'll push away from me, like with the nipples in her mouth. And so, I mean, any woman who's ever breastfed or pumped, you know, I mean, they, they stretch. Like I was amazed Whenever I started breastfeeding and pumping, like, just how much your nipples can stretch. Like, I, who knew they were that stretchy? But, like, oh anyway. my God, I got stretchy nipples. <laughs> yeah, right? So she, like, she'll be latched on really well and she pushes away from me. So it's like stretching my nipple out. Oh my out. God, like, uh, <laughs> Jeff Daniels, is that his name from Dumb and Dumber when he sticks his tongue to the ah! pole? Is that what it's like? <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible and it's so weird. And I'm like, you can't do that. But no, um, the other day she didn't, she didn't bite me. Um, okay. What, what had happened was I was sitting in the floor. That's how you knew a lie's coming. No. See, what, what had happened was. I, well, I have no reason to lie. I was sitting in the floor in their bedroom and I was breastfeeding them both at the same time. Um, since they're so big now, like I'll just, sometimes I'll just sit in the floor and I just have one, like sit on one of my legs and one sit on the other leg. And they can both breastfeed at the same time, like, sitting up. And anyway, I had Riley, but he got distracted and, like, crawled away. And then so I just had Reagan. I'm sitting in the floor, and she <laughs> is, like, bouncing. Like, she's trying to jump and breastfeed at the same time. And she came unlatched, and she's bouncing and tried to go and latch on. Oh, and my she God. Has, she has teeth now. She has two bottom teeth that are fully in. And she, like, didn't latch, but her bottom teeth scraped Ooh. the bottom of my nipple and it started bleeding right away it was you're gonna slip up and that girl's gonna bite your nipple so off horrible that's the first time that anything like that's ever happened that's the first time my nipples have bled but uh it, it, it was like it was horrible you know how i know i was trying not to freak out and scare her but i just wanted to be like oh my god get away from me you know how i know that we are definitely going to have listeners that are uncomfortable with this. Are you uncomfortable? I'm uncomfortable with this <laughs> right now. You're oh making gosh. the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I'm sorry. I couldn't imagine. That's why I was trying to warn my people. My nipples like being bitten off. Like that guy that had his nipple bit off by like a badger or something. Is I heard, that for real? I think so. Yeah. Nuh-uh. Like he held up a dead badger, but it wasn't dead. And like he wasn't wearing a shirt. I don't know if that's a true story. That sounds like it's probably not a true story. So you sorry, wanna... that's my interesting story for the week. That's just that's 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 what I got. You want to wrap things up with the dear Bobby? Oh, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, that's like our signature move. I know, and I people I... probably hate it. They're probably like, "Oh God, will you stop doing this stupid stuff?" All right, here we go. Okay, all right. Uh, dear Bobby. One of my friends who I work with is getting married this summer. She recently asked me for my address and since we also went to school together she asked me to give her a few of my other friends addresses as well so imagine my surprise when 
when my friends all received invitations to her wedding in the mail, and I did not. Oh, snap, son. <laughs> I think it's possible that my invitation legitimately was lost in the mail, or it might have been an honest oversight. However, I realize it's also possible that she wants to keep her wedding small and decided against inviting me. How do I politely ask if I'm invited to her wedding? I've tried bringing up this subject in conversation at work, but I'm afraid it would be rude to directly ask if I'm still invited. I consider her a good friend and get along great with her fiance, so I'm thinking it was an honest mistake. Tired of being Minnesota nice. Oh, she's a cheesehead. <laughs> um, no, that's Dang. Wisconsin. Is that Wisconsin? Yeah. Are you making me feel like an idiot right now? Yeah, that's Wisconsin. Oh. Mm. Mm. They're up north. I don't know. They're close. I'm not going to retire and move up there. <laughs> They're going to retire and move down here. We'll talk to them about it when they get here. Okay, so... Dang, imagine if that's like for real, like if that, if she was like, I'm just going to use her for the addresses and then I'm not going to. Well, my thoughts are surely that didn't happen. Like it's got to be an oversight. Yeah. Cause I mean, if she asked her for her address, then surely she didn't ask for her address to just not invite her. I think, I think this is a, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to come up with a funny way to spin this, but there's really not a funny way. It's just, that's a crappy situation. <laughs> really? The only thing she could do is I would message her. <laughs> And go, hey, I gave you my address for uh, your wedding invitation, but I didn't receive one. I was just yeah, checking. See, she works with her, so she probably sees her every day. Uh, you know, five days a week. I oh imagine. well, don't don't mention anything about knowing that your your other friends got the invitations. You know what? You, just go, hey, I gave you my address, and I didn't know if you had changed your mind and decided to do a small wedding or not. I would just go, um, oh, so how are the wedding invitations going? Oh, you mailed them out. Oh, I haven't got mine yet. I guess it's on the way. Or maybe just ask her directly, you know, hey, um, you asked me for my address for to send me an invitation and I didn't I didn't get it yet. I'm still getting one, right? But give her the out. No one me yeah, yeah. I, I guess it's hard because I would just be like, So, where's my invitation? <laughs> oh. So speaking of uh wedding invitations, let me tell you what I did to a guy uh that I work with. Or I don't work with him anymore. So you know, I'm gonna say his name. I don't even care. Um, his name is Brian, and he sent me a message, like a text message. He's getting married, which is awesome. And he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna invite you to the wedding." And, or we were talking about a couple things, like back and forth, right? Text messages, and and I'll say something, he answers. You know, he'll say something, I answer. It's going back and back and forth. And he says, "Yeah, and I want you to come to the wedding." And I said, "Wow, you want me to be your best man? That's great." I'm you are excited. such a jerk. <laughs> Like, and then way like, to put somebody in, like, <laughs> the most awkward situation. There's, like, 15 minutes he doesn't answer me back. That poor guy's probably, <laughs> he was probably sitting there sweating, like, um, how do I tell him, no, I do not want you to be my best man. But, uh, I, I, after, I let him, I let him sweat for about 15 minutes or so, and then I, I was like, hey, man, I'm just messing with you. Just making things awkward. And he said something funny back, but I definitely, he let me know. I, I made him feel awkward and he was, he was uh, upset about it. But, but we did receive their invitation. We did get an invitation <laughs> from them. And I'm, dude, I'm sorry. I haven't responded yet. I'm definitely coming. So mark me down as a plus one. I'm bringing my wife. Um, the only other thing I would like to say is keep your ears out. Very, very soon we will be, uh, not sponsored. What is the word I'm looking for? I don't know. We're going to be showcased on 107.5, The Vibe, on 365 Radio. We, uh, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. They've and got that's, a, that's internet radio. Yeah, internet radio. Not they, like you can't go turn it on your dial in your car and pick yeah. us up. <laughs> but they're, from everything, all the reports and paperwork I'm seeing, it's popping. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, that's really exciting. I think that's it. Hmm. We're good for tonight? Uh, I yeah. Guess so. uh, All right. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. I got a burp. Burp. That it was, was a, cute. It was a baby. Okay. Bye.